The main conversion takes place in the 10th year of the da'wah. The Prophet is making his rounds in Mina. So he's going on his way to the major tribes and he sees a small group at Aqaba, you know, with Aqaba where the stones are thrown. And he says, who are you? So they said, we are from the Khazraj. So he thinks, which Khazraj? The Khazraj that are from the neighbors of the Yahud, i.e. from Yathrib. They said, yes. So the Prophet said, may I speak with you? He said, yes, go ahead. So he sat down and he explained to them the teachings of Islam, recited to them the Quran, explained to them Tawheed and warned them against shirk, even though they were but six people without any tent. So it's not one of the rich tribes. And perhaps they converted on the spot. Perhaps they converted when they went back to the city of Medina. The first major converts from outside of Mecca. And subhanAllah, Allah Azza wa Jal had willed that Islam would be helped by this obscure tribe whom the Prophet did not even recognize. And they began spreading the message of Islam. In the next few months, everybody in the city of Yathrib, which would be called Medina in a year and a half, everybody had heard of the new message and knew that some of their own had converted. And the next year, in the 11th year of the prophetic preaching, they sent a message to the Prophet ﷺ that we're coming for Hajj with 12 people who have converted. 10 from the Khazraj and 2 from the Aus. And this is the largest group of converts from outside of Mecca. And they met with the Prophet ﷺ in the plains of Aqaba. This was the first time a formal conversion took place. And it is called, obviously, the first covenant of Aqaba. So, Ubadah ibn Samit said, I was of the those who took the first bay'at al-ula al-aqaba, the first covenant of aqaba, and it was the oath of the women, he called it. When women would convert, the Prophet would only ask them to live moral and righteous lives. This is called the oath of women because there are no political connotations. And we swore our allegiance to worship Allah alone, and we're not going to fornicate, we're not going to steal, we're not going to kill our children as they did in the days of Jahiliyyah. We will not live immoral and unrighteous lives, and we will obey obey the Prophet in all good matters. We all gave him our oath of allegiance. The Prophet ﷺ said, whoever fulfills this, whoever lives a righteous life, his reward will be with Allah. Allah will give you paradise. And whoever falls short and repents, then Allah will forgive you. And if you don't repent, then you might be punished. When these 12 converted to Islam, they requested some help in terms of teaching Islam. The Prophet ﷺ chose Mus'ab ibn Umair to send back with them to go to Yathrib. It is narrated that within a few weeks of Mus'ab reaching Yathrib, 40 people had converted to Islam. And therefore, the Prophet ﷺ told them they may establish Jum'ah Salah. So the very first Friday sermon was delivered by Mus'ab ibn Umayr with 40 people. In Mecca, they could not pray in public. In Mecca, they would have been persecuted and killed. And eventually, it is said that every single sub-tribe of the Aus and Khazraj had a household at least of Muslims. And the conversion of two people in particular led to a mass conversion, instantaneous conversion amongst the people of Yathrib. It is Usayd ibn Hudayr and Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad. Usayd ibn Hudayr is the one who, whenever he recited the Quran, he would see the angels come down to listen to him. He went to the process of saying, every time I recite, I see these, these lights and my animals start getting agitated and I get worried what's going on. The process said, these are Sakinat al-Rahman. These are the peace and the angels of, of al-Rahman coming to listen to your Quran. So basically continue reciting. Who is Sa'ad ibn Mu'ad? When he died, Arsh al-Rahman man shook out of anger that somebody had killed him. Within the span of a few weeks, the entire tribe of the Banu al-Ash'al converted and that was the largest conversion ever, mass conversion up until that point in time with the conversion of these two. And therefore, in the second year of Mus'ab's coming, which is the 12th year of the da'wah, we now have around 75 Muslims who came to give the bay'ah to the Prophet ﷺ. And by the way, these are 75 who went and did the hajj. One can imagine for everyone who went, there must have been at least two or three who cannot go that year, right? Because again, not everybody goes for Hajj every year. And a few months before the Hijrah is when this Bay'atul Aqaba takes place. So the Prophet says, meet me the very last night of Hajj in the last third of the night in the valley of the Aqaba that is behind where you camp. And Jabir ibn Abdullah narrates that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stayed for more than 10 years in Mecca, preaching to the people in Hajj, in the Hajj season, trying to find support from the other tribes when the Quraysh rejected him. And he would ask the other tribes, who will support me so that I can spread the message of my Lord? And he would not find anyone embracing his faith except for a man or two from Mudar or from Yemen or from this tribe until finally Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
guided us to Islam. A group from the people of Yathrib and we recited the Quran until not a single sub-tribe out of all of the people of Yathrib were there except that some amongst them had embraced Islam. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused us to come together and we spoke to one another and we said, for how long will we allow the Prophet to be repelled from one valley to another outside of Mecca and to fear for his life. And so we gathered together, Jabir is saying, in the last night of the Hajj. Ka'b ibn Malik also witnessed this treaty. And he said that when we went for Hajj, we hid our Islam from our pagan relatives. And we all agreed to meet at a particular place in the last third of the night. This is the valley behind Aqaba. And so in the middle of the night, we began sneaking out of our tents one by one so as not to arouse suspicion. We began sneaking out to meet with the Prophet وسلم, and we waited for him and eventually he came with his uncle Al-Abbas even though Al-Abbas was still upon the religion of his people. And then we go back to the version of Jabir and Jabir says that when his uncle Abbas came, Abbas said to the Prophet وسلم, looking at all of these people and he says, Oh my nephew, I don't know any of these men and I don't feel comfortable. Who are these youngsters? They're none of the senior people that I recognize from Yathrib and I knew many of them but I don't recognize a single one amongst them. And so Jabir says that we came in front of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Abbas was the one who stood up to speak on behalf of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he said Ya Khazraj you know the status of this man amongst us meaning the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and we have protected him from his own people even though we agree with our people. He has izza and honor amongst us and he has protection but he has decided to leave us us to go over to you. So if you are sure that you can live up to your conditions with him and protect him from those who disagree, then you shall bear his responsibility. Otherwise, let him be from now. And realize, Abbas concludes, that he is honored amongst his people. Abbas is clearly very hesitant at what's happening. And he's also embarrassed at the fact that his own nephew has to leave the Banu Hashim. And so he's trying to overcompensate by saying he has izzah and he has protection, but that's not true. Amongst the Quraysh, they tried to kill him multiple times. The Muslims replied, O oh Abbas, you have spoken. Now let the Prophet speak. And Ya Rasulullah, put the conditions that you want. What do you expect from us? What conditions do you need in order to move to Yathrib? The Prophet then stood up. And the Prophet began preaching and advising them to fear Allah Azza wa Jal and to reciting them the Quran. And then said, I shall give you the allegiance or the bay'ah in return for mun'ah protection. That you shall protect me like one of your own. Al-Bara ibn Ma'roos Surah. And he said, we are people who have experienced the arts of war. We have inherited it from our forefathers. This is an easy condition. Stretch forth your hand and we will give you the allegiance. Abu Al-Haytham stood up and he said, Ya Rasulullah, we have ties with the Yahud. We have political treaties with them. By accepting you, those treaties will be broken and we know it. So once you come over to our side and then Allah gives us victory, will you then leave us and go back to your people? Are you going to go back to Mecca and then you're going to leave us in a very difficult situation? in Medina because we would have broken all of our political alliances with everybody else. And so the Prophet smiled and he said, no, my blood is your blood and my destruction is your destruction, i.e. we are one people. And also once the Prophet gave his word, obviously he lived up to it. When he did reconquer Mecca, eventually he turned his back to Mecca and he walked back to Medina and he lived in Medina and he died in Medina and he is buried in Medina. So they said, O Messenger of Allah, what should we give you by Adam? So the Prophet ﷺ said, you must give the oath of allegiance that you hear and you obey in ease and in difficult and that you spend of your money in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that you command the good and forbid the evil and that you speak the truth no matter what the consequences. Never lie no matter what the consequences and that you help me once I come to Yathrib and this is one of the only times he called it Yathrib. Just like you help your own family and your own wives and children. This is a political bay'ah. Once the Prophet said this, a voice cried out from amongst them and what shall we get in return? And the Prophet said the one word that they wanted to hear, Al-Jannah. Paradise will be yours. And so they all stood up to give bay'ah to him. And before anybody could embrace the Prophet's hand, As'ad ibn Zurara held on to the Prophet's hand and kept it down. And he said, wait everybody, O people of Yathrib, we haven't traveled all of this distance and undertaken this long journey, except that we know that this man is the messenger of Allah. And once his people expel him, then you will be asking for war. And so if you're ready that your necks meet swords, 
then go and give him the oath of allegiance and realize that the best of you will be killed and fathers will lose their sons and sons will lose their fathers and you will cause death amongst yourselves by accepting him. Realize this, if you're prepared to do this, then give him the oath. If not, then stop now. Perchance Allah will forgive you because you didn't give the oath. And they said, oh As'ad, you have spoken enough. Get your hand off the hand of the Prophet We want to embrace his hand and give him the bay'ah. And so, one by one, all 72 men amongst them gave the bay'ah of the Prophet wasallam, and in return promised them Jannah one by one. And there were two women there. The Prophet took their oath of allegiance verbally. He did not take it uh, in his hand. As we know, the Prophet wasallam, never touched the hand of a woman that was not related to him. Abbas was looking along in great worry and great anger and great irritation. And he said to the Prophet wasallam, these are people, I don't know any of them and all of them are young kids. But if Abbas did not know them, then Allah Azza wa Jal knew them. If Abbas did not recognize them, then Allah and his messenger did indeed recognize them. It is narrated in Ibn Hisham that while this oath was going on, they heard a loud voice cry out, O people sleeping in the tents, do you not know that a group of rebels, a group of blameworthy people have gathered together with the Sabit to wage war against you? Sabit means for them monotheist. Under the Sabit, meaning of course the Prophet Sallallahu so the voice comes out to awaken the people in the tents in the middle of the night. And the Prophet ﷺ said, This is Azab ibn Uzayb, the shaytan of Aqaba. I swear by Allah, I will deal with you. So shaytan felt so overwhelmed at this time that he actually went public. Because shaytan is private, right? Shaytan is hidden. But he felt so overwhelmed that things are going to change now that he actually screamed out to the human world. The Ansar, when they heard this, they said, Ya Rasulullah, should we not launch an attack now? If they're going to fight, uh, shouldn't we preempt the attack? And we're 70 strong. We all have our swords. They are unarmed. Remember, it's Hajj. In Hajj, you're only allowed to carry one weapon. They don't have the, the fighting swords. They have, a, if you like, a defense sword, right? We can attack them in the middle of the night and we can have a huge, if you like, victory over them. The Prophet ﷺ said, I haven't been commanded to do this. When this news spread, the Ansar then basically the meeting wrapped up quickly. The bay'ah was finished and they went back to their tents silently just as they had come. And the next morning, the delegation from the Quraysh was sent to every single single camp that do you know of any meeting that took place with this man Muhammad do you know anybody who met did anybody from your tribe meet until finally when they went to the tents of the Khazraj the Quraysh come in and they say who amongst you has met with the Prophet Sallallahu the Muslims remain silent and the pagans spoke up and they said no by Allah we have no idea what this is and the Muslims went in behind that oath and the matter was resolved and thus second bay'ah was completed and the Ansar returned home even more excited waiting for the Prophet Sallallahu to come to their city, the Prophet did not expect it to come from Yathrib. Neither was Yathrib on his immediate radar. He himself said so. That when I was in Mecca, Allah showed me that I would be immigrating to another land. And he showed it to me and it was a land of greenery, a land of palm trees. So I thought that it might be in Yemen, but rather it turned out to be Yathrib. And he then changed the name of Yathrib to Medina. This initial seed of six people gave fruit and the next year more than double the number came back. The next year more than 10 times that quantity came back and the next year they demanded from the Prophet ﷺ, you're not going to live amongst those people who are persecuting you you will come to us with izza and honor and we will give our lives and our souls to protect you the tide changed so quickly that within two and a half years an entire city could be demanding we want you to come and be our leader and from a time of humiliation and weakness overnight, the Muslims shall be transformed into state of power and izzah, which is gonna continue to grow and grow and grow. And this is the change from Makkah to Medina.